Star Trek and Detectives continues with Generations. Let's get a closer work. Look. Ooh, that's a lot of reflection. So seventh Star Trek. Hi, it's Shannon. Hey. <laughs> um, seventh film in the Star Trek film series. First with the Next Generation cast and bit of a crossover actually between the two, the original series and the Next Generation. Now this one, gotta say, I don't really love this one. I don't love Generations. I remember being really, really excited for it when it came out. I had a pretty bad experience seeing it in the theater. I was so excited. I got tickets for a whole bunch of my friends, like 11 people, and we went on opening night to a cool theater that was downtown. I was so excited. And then, like, I didn't think, and no one else thought, to wait in line to actually get seats. So we had tickets. <laughs> didn't have seats. And with that many people, we unfortunately ended up sort of second from the back of a huge theater. So being at the back was not, you know, so I know some people really like to be at the back, but it's very p particular. So being in the front and the back is either of which is very particular. And it was just, it was horrible. Like people were grumpy, you know, people didn't like it. Someone's cell phone went off, which was unheard of at the time. Cell phones are, this is from 94. So it was very rare. Like some people had pagers then, but it was, you know, still like you doctors and drug dealers, <laughs> you know, kind of idea. And so someone's cell phone went off and he actually answered the phone and had this whole conversation about how he's in the theater watching Star Trek. So in general, it was not a good experience. So, But what I learned from that, actually, what I learned from that was that, you know, when you're seeing a movie that you're part of the fandom, see it with people who are part of the fandom because that's really what the experience is about. And also, on the flip side of that, when you see a movie on opening night or opening weekend, like Friday or Saturday night, to be honest, 75% of the people are really just there to watch a movie. It doesn't really matter that it's this movie. So if it's a movie that's really important to you, seeing it Friday or Saturday night on their opening weekend sometimes is not the best idea. It's better to see it, you know, take a long lunch, <laughs> you know, or see it on Thursday if it has a midnight screening. If you can, that's a really good time. Or, you know, see it. I like to see stuff during the day um, just because it has a bit of a different tempo. And really, honestly, people are jerks on Friday and Saturday night. I don't say that, like, I don't like to think that, but in general, in my experience, it is not a good time as a film fan to see a film because people are people are just out to be out and they don't really ca like some of them care but and you you know you get, might get some people you know and there's some really big movies that it's okay with and you would think that would be the case with Star Trek but that ended up not being the case for me anyway so going in like I just I didn't have a great experience and then I didn't actually really like the movie either um, and it used to be <laughs> ironically for a long time when I had insomnia a fair amount. It was my bedtime story because it used to put me to sleep. <laughs> so anyway, memories aside, on the rewatch, I should have saved that with the funny stories till the end, but on the rewatch, I still find this one a bit of a challenge to get through. Um, partially because of that, I try and put it to the side because it is its own separate movie, is not just my experience of the film. But I still don't really love it. I actually had forgotten that it's um, mostly the Next Generation cast and then has some of the original series cast. But it's pretty, I wouldn't say heavy, but it doesn't feel heavy while you're watching it. But there's some pretty heavy things that happen in terms of the Star Trek world. There's... Um, Thematically, this is a bit more sort of in the land of the motion picture and Star Trek V, where the themes are a little more out there, um, and in terms of what's the overarching story of the film. And and I wasn't particularly drawn to to the theme or the idea or the concepts that they were working with. So that's, you know, challenging from the get-go. Um, and I also remember, and this it still feels like the case, that because it's the first film 
with the next generation cast that there's definitely some things that they can do in film that they can't do in TV and I do feel like they that just do them for the sake of being able to do them and I'm not a fan of that either because you know especially as someone who watched the next generation you know you live with the characters for seven years and then you know y you know just because there's the opportunity to see something different doesn't mean you need to take the opportunity so there's some of that kind of stuff and some of it I feel a little better a little differently than originally but still most of the stuff I just feel like really I don't know so it is kind of cool to see the next generation cast on the big screen or in feature film format I'm in the currently in the middle of a re next generation rewatch so this is actually really weird because I'm just in the middle of season six so and this came after so the se series ended in May and this film came out in November so there's also not a lot of time built up to miss the people either like of course you miss them but it's not it's just like the amount of time nowadays between a season ending and a season starting so there's weirdness there too so I don't know I just I wasn't there's not much I really am drawn to in this series there's some there's some cool little things like the actor that plays Tuvok on Star Trek Voyager is in it the Cameron from Ferris Bueller's Day Off <laughs> is in it. Vasquez from Aliens is in it. You know, so there's little things like that that are cool. And I did like some stuff, but it really felt like more like that in part some of the message of this movie kind of felt like that the captain is like the most important person. And I don't really feel or has the most impact. And I don't really feel like that thematically fits what they say in the series or any of the series you know I think maybe in the original series with Kirk there's a, it's a bit different um, he has such a alpha persona whereas with Picard the the how the crew on the Enterprise works and with Picard is very different and some of the places they go with Captain Picard I'm like or the themes they use or the decisions they make I'm like I don't I don't really feel like that's what would you know that's what's important to him or it, you know like it's not I didn't not believe it, but I wouldn't think that it'd be the first thing on the list. You know, be somewhere on the list, maybe. And there's actually stuff in the series that doesn't support that. So stuff like that's weird, and I know that's pretty nitpicky, but heck, it's Trek, and I don't know. Like, I watch a lot of Trek, so I, <laughs> I can be nitpicky. <laughs> I can quote out certain <laughs> episodes where I think there is something that says the difference between that. I don't know. But then on the other hand, doing the rewatch, it actually reminded me of, sev of c several characters that are relevant. And so that was, that part was kind of cool. I, I don't know. So, I don't know. I didn't get much more of a positive experience for it this time around. I did end up stopping it, uh, you know, to make another cup of tea and check my email. One time I checked my email without stopping it. And I'm like, oh, wait, no, no, no. So I had to rewind. And I'm like, so obviously my attention level on it is not good. It's not one I pull off the shelf unless I'm looking for a bedtime story. Um, and then it works like a charm. It usually, <laughs> usually works really well. <laughs> um, so, I don't know. And there's also some stuff that feels like a bit of a cheat. So, I don't know. <laughs> so I'm glad that I got this one done and out of the way because uh, the next one's uh, Star Trek First Contact, which I quite adore. Um, but this, for me, this one is very very, very, very low. Like, it's either my least favorite. It might be, I think it is probably my least favorite. Like, honestly, if it's the kind of thing that you forget to press pause and go do something, for me, I don't do that. Especially when it's like an active rewatch or an active marathon or something like that. Like, I'm there, I'm ready, I'm watching this movie. I was like, yeah, whatever, check my email, and they, no, 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 Shannon, no, 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 this is focused watching, but it was hard, so anyway, I'm glad it's over, <laughs> sorry, that's a bit sort of like a grumpy review, but I, in some ways, I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is from 94, like, honestly, 19 years ago, 19 years ago, wow, <laughs> that's, and my opinion of it hasn't really changed, it is kind of cool that Malcolm McDowell's in it, that's cool. Wow, there are tons of extra features. And I get the, um, I don't, like, I, it, like, I can, f I could, I could feel some meaningful moments between the characters and or actors, you know, and I get that, and it's a lot to bridge a story, like, to bridge the two different, um, series, have its own story, you know, 
and some character development too, and be right off of the series. Like that's a big, that's a tall order. But I definitely found like, oh, you know, just moment to moment, that to that didn't really work. We got heavy here, here, and here, you know, and um, some of the, ch but some of the other choices, some of the character development type choices, I thought were actually I didn't have a problem with when I, and I did on the first time. So there's a little, I got a little more this time, just a little more, but not a lot. Not a lot, but I'm looking forward to moving forward and getting onto the first contact. And we're getting close. Oh my gosh! I guess we're halfway through April, so it's only a month-ish away. I can't actually remember off the top of my head when it comes out. I think it's when is it May? Ooh, May 11th. I don't know. I know I did the math right for the time stuff, so don't worry about that. But yeah, Star Trek Generations. Yeah, see ya. <laughs>